So a very warm welcome to Marit Stiles, Leader of the Opposition, of the Official Opposition, the Ontario New Democratic Party, MPP Davenport. Marit Stiles is the Leader of the Official Opposition and the Ontario's New Democrats. She has been the MPP for Davenport since 2018. Prior to this, she represented the area as their public school trustee. Prior to becoming the leader, Marit has served as the official opposition education critic, partnering with education workers and parents to defend public education. Before entering elected office, Marit fought to strengthen Canada's arts sector and stood up for culture sector workers as the national director of research and bargaining at ACTRA, ACTRA, Canada's Union for Broadcast Media Professionals. Born and raised in Newfoundland, I hope I said Newfoundland right, Marit moved to Ontario to study and find work. She lives in Toronto with her partner, Jordan, where they have raised two daughters. Welcome, Ms. Stott. Uh, no, you did great. Thank you so much, everybody. It's great to see you all here. Um, I'm welcoming up my, my colleague, uh, Wayne Gates. He is uh, MPP for Niagara, but also, more importantly, our critic for long-term care. And, uh, and really, uh, such an incredible advocate for long-term care. I wanted to make sure he had a, a moment to say a couple words, too, and, and, and you know, answer your questions. Uh, listen, I want to start by thanking um, Dr. Holloway uh, uh, Lamo, who I just want to say I met uh, uh, a wonderful nurse practitioner and president-elect. We, we met uh, in the fall at Humber River and just uh, so inspiring. And of course, to uh, Doris uh, for everything. Uh, but look, I am, I am just thrilled to be here with you today. I was thinking back, and I think that uh, this time last year when I addressed this group, I think it was probably one of the first uh, big events, meetings that I, I actually spoke to after I became officially the leader of the opposition and the leader of NDP in Ontario. And uh, I, I, I felt, I was very nervous, actually. I don't know if you could tell. But I, I was a little nervous because, um, you know, I, I, really, I really respect the work you do. I know uh, that you were going to have tough questions, uh, or hope you do again. And also, you know, I, I just, it's, it's a, an issue that in terms of the things that I care about and where I see our priorities uh, going forward for the next two and a half years till the next election, and hopefully after we form government in 2026, <laughs> is, uh, you know, is healthcare. It's healthcare. And you are at the front line, uh, not just as the workers, but also as the advocates, as the visionaries, as the experts. And I really, you know, many years ago when I was much younger, <laughs> I worked a little bit in health policy and had the benefit way back then of being able to rely on the excellent research and work that RNAO was doing, uh, also under the leadership of, of Dr. Greenspoon. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you have done up till now and all that you continue to do. Yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause, please. Um, I know you've had some exciting panels and conversations. Uh, I, can I just get a show of hands? How many of you, is this your first Queen's Park Advocacy Day? Wow, that's impressive. Well, congratulations. Did you find yourself, did you, did, were you able to find your way around Queen's Park? Yeah, mostly, right? Um, <laughs> well, listen, I want to thank you for all that you've done. Um, uh, as you could probably saw this morning, I assume most of you were at question period, uh, the entire NDP caucus, all 28 of us, are working very hard to address, I think, the myriad of issues that are facing our public health care system in particular. And uh, with Wayne as our long-term care critic, with France Jelina as our amazing health care critic, critic, and may I just say, she would be here today if she wasn't on a flight back to her riding of Nickel Belt because she injured herself in a uh, uh, snowboarding accident. And those of you who know France will not be surprised by this 
Um, <clears throat> but she injured herself, and she's got to go back and have it looked at. But otherwise, she would be here with us as well. And, I, and she was here this morning, and I'm sure you heard her question. She's fantastic. Uh, but look, the, the issues that are facing the public health care system in Ontario are costing the people of the province. Uh, who don't know whether an ambulance is going to come in time or whether an emergency room will be open when they turn up or whether they're going to get to see a nurse or a nurse practitioner or a doctor or anyone without spending a whole day in a waiting room. And we see also, of course, you know, a lot of promises that are made over the years, uh, but we're seeing while those promises are being made, we're seeing clinics close. Uh, just last week, I had uh, a group of retirees and steelworkers from Sault Ste. Marie who founded a clinic in Sault Ste. Marie who are now seeing that clinic losing, uh, losing doctors, losing nurses because uh, of underfunding, because they cannot attract people. And at the end of the day, that's going to mean 10,000 people in Sault Ste. Marie are left without primary care by May. So, you know, and then today I raised it, maybe you heard me raise the situation in Perth. And this is what we're seeing over and over and over again. And as I think many of you here are more than aware, the latest stat I heard is by 2026, a quarter of Ontarians won't have access to primary care if we don't turn things around fast. Um, as I'm traveling the province, and since we last met last year, I have been around this province a lot. I've met, I think, with many of you actually in communities across the province, um, talking and listening, not just to the problems, but to the solutions. And I think we are all aware, uh, very aware, certainly in our caucus, of what you're facing. Um, I, I, I really appreciated seeing the research here that RNAO has provided, but I didn't need it to know the stress the anxiety, the moral distress that you are experiencing on the job and in your communities. And it is shameful, and we need to do something about it. <laughs> Hospitals and long-term care are desperately understaffed, making Ontario's ratio of registered nurses per capita not one of the best in Canada, but one of the worst. And this simply cannot go on. Um, Status quo, I like to say, is no longer an option in Ontario, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. But I want you to know very clearly that Ontario's New Democrats are committed to pushing for solutions that will actually not just create a dent, but actually transform our healthcare system for the better. As I just said, all of us in the room know some of the solutions. You are the experts. And the evidence-based work, the data-driven work that you do, um, the, uh, the extraordinary work of the BPG, the BP guidelines, like all of this expertise, this excellence that you promote is so, so important. What I find so very frustrating is that the solutions are right there before us. The government could start to fix this mess right now if they wanted to. But just increasing funding um, for our public hospitals alone, it would make a big difference. But the truth is that we need to see that expansion of community health centers, of nurse practitioner-led clinics. And, and you know, more importantly, what we need to do is stop the Ford Conservatives from doing what they're doing right now, which is funneling millions of those public health care dollars into the private sector. We've known all along like, that that was going to cost the system more, right? We've been saying it all along. But uh, we have the evidence now that it's been in place for a little while from the Ontario Health Coalition, data that shows us that what this government's actions are actually costing us. And more importantly, they are hurting us. Uh, Premier Ford increased funding for profit, uh, for-profit corporate clinics, uh, hospitals, etc while at the same time imposing those wage cap bills, those wage cap bills, those cuts, uh, leading our public health care system into deficits. And I'm going to tell you, and you know this, uh, but as I travel around the province, and I've been raising the flag on this for, I don't know, at least the last six months, 
I am hearing more and more from especially small rural hospitals who are saying they don't think they can make payroll. Something is deeply wrong with the system when we are hemorrhaging our public health care dollars out like that and we are not getting the return we need. And I don't need to tell any of you this, but I thought I'd share some numbers anyways on how those government funding cuts are playing out in real time across the province. Between 2022 and 2023, over 2,000 people have died on waiting lists for surgeries. There's been a 20, 20, sorry, 22 percent increase in hallway health care. Surgical wait times are 49 percent longer, and 170 hospital beds and 60,000 more staff are going to be needed at least over the next four years. The nursing vacancy rate has more than doubled since the Conservatives were elected, and things weren't so rosy before then, can I just say. But these are not just numbers when I talk, and I know that you know that intimately, but I feel like sometimes when I'm talking to other groups and you name off the numbers of the people who have died, you know, it's like, those are just numbers. No, those are families. Those are families, those are real people with loved ones and jobs and contributions to make. Real people who have died because we have a government, I'm gonna say it, that just refuses to unleash the money that we all know would go a long way to alleviating the immediate issues that are keeping our public hospitals in a, cho in a chokehold. And I'm gonna let, let Wayne talk a little bit more about long-term care because I know we're also facing very much the same crisis. If we continue down this path, these numbers are gonna get bigger more lives will be lost, and we will create a society with people who get health care and those who do not. And those people will suffer. And I want to tell you, that is not the Ontario that I came to 30 years ago uh, when I moved here from Newfoundland, and it is not the Ontario I want for my children or their children or their children. The NDP is the party of Tommy Douglas, right? Uh, so for us, I have to say, I think like we always feel like it's like our duty to protect this system. Um, and to, you know, if you're the party that created uh, free and public health care in Canada, uh, you can darn well count on us to never back down on this issue. Uh, we will not stand by with a government that is hell bent, hell bent on starving the public health care system. We, we will not do it. Now, I, I, want to, um, I want to recognize how hard you've been working. I did that at the start. Uh, and I want to also recognize the time you're giving up here today to be with us. Because, you know, in the past, in a past life, I did a lot of this as well. Uh, for different issues that I was working, I would come to Queen's Park or go to Parliament Hill and lobby and talk to people and hope they listened. And you're giving up time with your families uh, and I want to thank you because many of you are very active in your communities on these issues. I want to thank you as well for your contribution there. But look, um, there is a lot of work to be done and I want to talk a little bit about the solutions as I see them. Uh, obviously, we've been calling for increased funding for nurse practitioner clinics. You know, if COVID was an all hands on deck moment, surely this is too right? We need nurses, we need nurse practitioners, we need internationally trained healthcare professionals who are ready to go and ready to work right now. There is so much, and I want to congratulate RNAO. I know you had a really interesting panel earlier, but I want to thank you uh, for taking the time and making one of your focuses uh, here today, addressing equity and diversity and inclusivity in healthcare. Uh, black, indigenous, uh, BIPOC people continue, we know, to face systemic racism every single day. They face it out there navigating everyday life, and unfortunately, that also means that nurses and healthcare care staff also experience uh, that racism, those structural barriers in our hospitals, in our long-term care facilities, in their places of work. And on the last day of Black History Month, I want to say let's all commit to putting in the hard work to address and end racism and all forms of discrimination in Ontario's health care system. Each and every single health care professional deserves to feel safe supported and respected. Yes. I also want to do a big shout out to my colleagues in British Columbia. 
because they just brought in nurse patient staffing ratios. Yeah, yeah. And I am darn proud of that. I think we all are over in the NDP caucus. Um, but you know, I think it's important to mention it, not just because they're new Democrats, but that is definitely part of it. Uh, but also because look, you know, they're showing that there's other ways to do this, that it is possible. And when government officials sit down with you, and I'm sure, I, I suspect you may have heard this a few times today, and they say, well, we can only do so much, there's only so much money, there's only so much time. I would challenge that. We have done big things in the province of Ontario, and we can do big things again. And so I want to wrap this up for a moment by, uh, by just saying a few things uh, to you about my vision. Um, government after government, I think have shortchanged us enough. They tell us that we have to settle for less than better. They want us to believe that the answer lies in privatization. And by the way, they may have created the chaos. We all know that's far from the truth. We know not only what needs to happen right now, but we are also going to work together with all of you to build a vision for the future of public health care. As I said at the beginning, I mean, clearly the status quo isn't good enough, but I really do want to challenge all of us to think about what a health care system that really works for Ontario, that works for everyone, actually looks like. Uh, you just saw uh, Jagmeet Singh in Ottawa uh, leverage his power in Parliament to push and actually you know, move the, the needle forward to get us a public universal pharmacare program in this country. That is exciting. <laughs> universal dental care, making mental health part of our public health care system. You know, these seem like, kind of, these are not pie in the sky ideas. And I will say, as, as Doris noted, when I came in and I shook hands with the Minister of Health, absolutely, we need to work together. Um, and when you have these unique moments like we're seeing in Ottawa right now, where actually a government has, has to work with other prop parties to get things done, like, yes, we can actually accomplish things that way if we work together, if we work together and come up with innovative and creative solutions to the problems that we're facing. We need to build this vision of the future of healthcare on the expertise of frontline healthcare workers, of RNAO, on data and on evidence. We need to not only rebuild what we're losing, we need to revolutionize it. And with that, I want to say again, thank you so much. You can probably hear what I'm saying is I'm tired of half measures. I want to build a vision so that in 2026, and, and I'll work real hard with Wayne and my colleagues, and we'll try our best to keep things moving forward and not backward. Well, I will say, I intend to have the government reverse course on one more big policy, and that's the privatization of health care in the next year and a half. But I'm tired of, of these you know, bad decisions and then rolling it back and changing everything every four years. I want to revolutionize our healthcare system, our public healthcare system in Ontario. I can only do it with you. Uh, and I want to thank you again for all the work you're doing. Thank you so much. And thank you for looking after the people of this province. Thanks.